Hello ladies and gentlemen, less than two weeks are left for Starfield to officially launch into the horizon and if you're anything like me, there is excitement that is slowly building up inside of you as each day is passing. Now there's also that feeling of anxiousness about not exactly knowing what one should expect as it's become a bit of a trend for games with spectacular hype behind them to go down into crashing flames the moment they release. Now, this is Bethesda's first new IP in over two decades, and by far their most ambitious one yet. It's been eight years in the making, which is huge, and even big for Xbox as it's arguably their most important exclusive release in a long while. Now, this means that there are a lot of people looking towards this release with genuine excitement and others sadly with resentment as this game isn't going to be on PlayStation, Starfield is kinda stuck in between console war shenanigans. This has led to a lot of misleading information being spread about the game, like there being claims that No Man's Sky can give a similar or maybe even better experience than Starfield. But that's basically just a lie. Because the genre is so similar, many people end up falling for something that is so blatantly false. We live in an age where people are quick to follow trends, and sadly it's super effective for both hyping up a game and bringing one down. This video isn't about explaining all of Starfield's features, it's actually to clear up some misunderstandings of some key features that some people have built up. Ultimately, no game is perfect and no game can satisfy everyone. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be a bit more informed of the game and then make a proper decision about whether you think this game is for you or not. Let's get started. Starfield is a space exploration RPG. The game is set in the settled systems which includes a thousand planets of which only 10% have life, but this doesn't account for all the space station and moon life that you may encounter. Now, space is vast and mostly empty, and a lot of people end up feeling that this might make the game feel empty, but this is actually on purpose. The game wants to depict you going alone into the void of darkness trying to figure out how to survive, how to get resources, but also being on guard in case you suddenly find hostile life. Now, this however doesn't mean that the game doesn't have any content or is actually empty. It has over 250,000 lines of dialogue and for comparison, Skyrim only had 60,000. So this shows you how massive the scope for this game actually is. But to make sure that you have a good experience, Starfield is using a tech that places dynamic locations on the planets that you're visiting and exploring. So those settlements will randomly just pop up close to you as you're going about. The game won't always be doing this obviously, because they want you to experience the void in space. It's actually part of the whole experience. So if it's that something that you don't like, this game may not be for you. But you should keep in mind that this is only part of the experience. There are tons of other places where you see tons of life and in many ways you will be able to control what sort of planets you wish to spend time on. So the story is for you to make. The devs have done their very best to strike a balance between reality and science fiction. And if implemented really well, this will end up being a very very beautiful game. Many people were disappointed when they realized that Starfield had no ground vehicles to move around in, and I can understand the frustration because you would think you'd go around on foot on these gigantic planets, but that isn't the entire truth. Starfield instead opted to make your jetpack your main mode of transportation instead of a vehicle. You see, the jetpack will have its own skill tree that you'll be upgrading. And this is actually quite smart and important because in Starfield, different areas have different gravity. So the jetpack is by far the most versatile and complete answer to almost all the obstacles that you will encounter. And it's also an almost seamless way to engage with your opponents and the environment around you. And if you really need to go super far away, you can always have a spaceship which is at your command. Though it would be really cool to have a vehicle, I think the jetpack is a good way to go especially because I'm gonna be feeling like a Mandalorian the entire time, so don't worry. This is the way. Starfield uses a procedural system to build over a thousand planets. This can usually end up making the planets look alike and make the game feel dull. But this is where the tech that I talked about earlier comes back into play. 
the ability to place dynamic handcrafted elements everywhere you go. You see, handcrafted elements aren't just limited to large stations or outposts, but also include smaller things like animals and plants. They have an entire suite of this handcrafted content just to build up detail within the game. The result is something quite spectacular. Because it controls the entire sequence, it decides what sort of experience you will be getting depending on multiple variables. This means that everyone will have a unique experience in the game. In terms of how many handcrafted content they have, Todd Howard said that it's more than Skyrim and Fallout combined, and they don't really have an exact figure on it. But there are absolutely tons of things that have been handcrafted to help you experience this game in the best way. Many of these things haven't been shown in the gameplay direct due to time constraints or have been purposely hidden as gems for players to discover on their own. So basically, the content is following you wherever you go. This adds quite a bit of replay value for Starfield people who like to experience the game over and over, which I think is an added bonus. With the scope and scale of this game, there are bound to be bugs and glitches. But there are also other issues that people don't like, such as the game being 30 FPS on the Xbox, or the PC not getting DLSS support because the game partnered with AMD. Now, there are a lot of positive news as well coming up from the people who have been able to test this game. They're not allowed to share their entire opinions just yet, but it's pretty clear from what I've heard that the bugs and glitches are minimal and nobody's experienced anything game-breaking yet. On the topic of 30 frames, a lot of devs have already called out that being at 30 or 60 frames is a design choice. If there's a game that's meant to run at 60 frames and then they suddenly decide that they need to go back down to 30, then that might be a problem. But so far, all signs indicate that they were planning to release this game at 30 beforehand. In fact, they haven't even had a discussion for performance mode because they're super happy with how well the game is running. Personally, I think they've made some major overhauls to their system, and I was a little afraid that this game might just be a fallout but set in space. And I'm super happy that it is very different and worthy of being a whole new IP. The way the characters move, fluid animations, and good gunplay, I think you will have an amazing time with this game. Especially since Bethesda themselves claim that this is their best feeling game yet, regardless of it running at 30. Now about DLSS. Is it sad that it's not being supported? Definitely. This just makes AMD look bad. But FSR2, that is within the game, can be run by both NVIDIA and AMD cards. Yes, it's an inferior technology, but it isn't a game-breaking deal because within two weeks of the game being up, I am pretty sure some will mod DLSS support into the game. What I'm actually skeptical about is how well the game will be optimized for PC, as Xbox seems to have been doing a bad job at catering games at the PC end with their last few releases. Plus, Starfield's game requirements are a tad higher, so if you don't have a proper PC rig, I don't think you're gonna be able to run this game too well. I hope I'm wrong, but this is just my hunch. Hopefully the game ends up running well for everyone. The last topic I want to talk about is the whole No Man's Sky vs Starfield bit, or any other space game that people keep dishing out to compare. Both games are very different, don't let people push you into hating a game because some fan buy out there makes your game feel inferior. Both games are incredible at what they do, and I, or at least I hope Starfield comes out to be incredible too. Now, No Man's Sky has already had their fair share of trouble, and they delivered tremendously to get the game to where it is now. For those of you who don't know, their team is very tiny, I think it's like 15 people or something. Starfield is bit by a much bigger team, and it's a game where you can really immerse yourself in the story and in much bigger details. Well, No Man's Sky has a sandboxy feel to it, and it also is a multiplayer experience. So, they are two widely different games that should be celebrated, including all the other space games out there. Because these sort of games aren't easy to pull off. Now, for those of you who have stuck around till the end of this video, I just want to say that I haven't been this excited for a single player game in a long, long while. I've been playing multiplayer games for the past few years non-stop and this game is genuinely something that I'm waiting for. I absolutely loved Oblivion and Skyrim back in the day and though Fallout was never really my thing and I'm glad this game isn't a Fallout, no offense to any Fallout lovers out there, but the feeling of being completely immersed in a game was completely lost in time for me and I think I'll be able to taste it again with how cinematically beautiful this game is and how good it feels. 
This is clearly a very ambitious game. Hopefully, I was able to clear away some doubts for most of you. You can never truly know what a game will be like until it's out, but I have a good feeling about this one. Hopefully, it actually turns out that way. If you like this video, I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe to my channel as that helps me grow and push myself to make better content. Feel free to leave a comment about how you feel about Starfield or the video in general. That shall be all for me. Be kind, be humble, be brave. Take care.